You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in Jeremiah chapter 52. And we'll be reading from the Contemporary English Version. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he was appointed king of Judah, and he ruled from Jerusalem for 11 years. His mother, Hamutal, was the daughter of Jeremiah from the town of Libna. Zedekiah disobeyed the Lord just as Jehoiakim had done, and it was Zedekiah who finally rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. The people of Judah and Jerusalem had made the Lord so angry that he finally turned his back on them. That's why horrible things were happening. In Zedekiah's ninth year as king, on the tenth day of the tenth month, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia led his entire army to attack Jerusalem. The troops set up camp outside the city and built ramps up to the city walls. After a year and a half, all the food in Jerusalem was gone. Then on the ninth day of the fourth month, the Babylonian troops broke through the city wall. That same night, Zedekiah and his soldiers tried to escape through the gate near the royal garden, even though they knew the enemy had the city surrounded. They headed toward the Jordan River Valley, but the Babylonian troops caught up with them near Jericho. The Babylonians arrested Zedekiah, but his soldiers scattered in every direction. Zedekiah was taken to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where Nebuchadnezzar put him on trial and found him guilty. Zedekiah's sons and the officials of Judah were killed while he watched. Then his eyes were poked out. He was put in chains, then dragged off to Babylon and kept in prison until he died. Jerusalem was captured during Nebuchadnezzar's 19th year as king of Babylonia. About a month later, Nebuchadnezzar's officer in charge of the guards arrived in Jerusalem. His name was Nebuzaradan, and he burned down the Lord's temple, the king's palace, and every important building in the city, as well as all the houses. Then he ordered the Babylonian soldiers to break down the walls around Jerusalem. He led away the people left in the city, including everyone who had become loyal to Nebuchadnezzar, the rest of the skilled workers, and even some of the poor people of Judah. Only the very poorest were left behind to work the vineyards and the fields. Nebuzaradan ordered his soldiers to go to the temple and take everything made of gold or silver, including bowls, fire pans, sprinkling bowls, pans, lampstands, dishes for incense, and the cups for wine offerings. The Babylonian soldiers took all the bronze things used for worship at the temple, including the pans for hot ashes and the shovels, lamp snuffers, sprinkling bowls, and dishes for incense. The soldiers also took everything else made of bronze, including the two columns that stood in front of the temple, the large bowl called the sea, the twelve bowls that held it up, and the movable stands. The soldiers broke these things into pieces so they could take them to Babylonia. There was so much bronze that it could not be weighed. For example, the columns were about 27 feet high and 18 feet round. They were hollow, but the bronze was about 3 inches thick. Each column had a bronze cap over 7 feet high that was decorated with bronze designs. Some of these designs were like chains and others were like pomegranates. There were 96 pomegranates evenly spaced around each column and a total of 100 pomegranates were located above the chains. Next, Nebuzaradan arrested Sariah the chief priest, Zephaniah his assistant, and three temple officials. Then he arrested one of the army commanders, seven of King Zedekiah's personal advisors, and the officer in charge of gathering the troops for battle. He also found 60 more soldiers who were still in Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan led them to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where Nebuchadnezzar had them killed. The people of Judah no longer lived in their own country. Here is a list of the number of the people of Judah that Nebuchadnezzar took to Babylonia as prisoners. In his seventh year as king, 
he took 3,023 people. In his 18th year as king, he took 832 from Jerusalem. In his 23rd year as king, his officer Nebuzaradan took 745 people. So Nebuchadnezzar took a total of 4,600 people from Judah to Babylonia. Jehoiachin was a prisoner in Babylon for 37 years. Then evil Merodach became king of Babylonia, and in the first year of his rule, on the 25th day of the 12th month, he let Jehoiachin out of prison. Evil Merodach was kind to Jehoiachin and honored him more than any of the other kings held prisoner there. Jehoiachin was allowed to wear regular clothes instead of a prison uniform, and he even ate at the king's table every day. As long as Jehoiachin lived, he was paid a daily allowance to buy whatever he needed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege of being able to look at it together today. And we thank you, Lord, that you remind us that sin has its consequences, and that when we invite idols into our lives, you take it upon yourself to root those things out and to show us how worthless they are and how destructive they are. Lord, you did that for the people of Israel and Judah. You did that for the people of Babylon. And you do that for us as well, reminding us that our faith should never be in idols, but rather should always be in your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we pray that you'd strengthen our faith. We pray that as you refine our character, that we would walk with you faithfully in all contexts of life. We love you, Lord, and we're grateful for the privilege to be called your children. And we commit ourselves to your care today and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. My newest book, The Desire Jesus One-Year Devotional, was just released and is available for purchase on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback editions. A link can be found in this episode's description, and I hope it will be a blessing to you throughout this coming year as you grow in your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.